So I recently had the opportunity to take the Fender Tone Master FR10 speaker to a gig. And in this video, I'm just going to talk about my basic thoughts after using the FR10 in a live situation and whether the speaker lives up to the hype. So if you haven't seen my video on the unboxing and initial impressions of the Fender Tone Master FR10, I will leave it up in the corner for you to take a look at after you're done watching this video. But basically, my first thoughts of the unit were, it's very light, it's very portable, it's loud, and it sounds really good. It also has tilt back legs and a construction that looks like a regular amplifier if that's your thing. Through the sound clips that I demoed in that last video, I found that it sounded very much like my studio monitors that I have here, and I was very happy to tweak presets and stuff like that on it. And as I mentioned, the on unit tone controls are very welcome, something that my Friedman ASC-10 cabinet does not have, and something that I think really wins me over for the Tone Master from a kind of all-around speaker, something that I can use here at home and then take with me to a gig and still be able to get the sound that I'm looking for. So here's a couple of clips from the gig that I played the other night using the FR10. So just for reference, the speaker was below the camera and behind me. So you're going to get kind of an unflattering angle of me, but I really didn't have anywhere else to put my camera. And I forgot my tripod that I usually bring to a show. So please bear with me, but this should give you some idea of what it sounds like keeping up with a drummer. So from what we've heard, it sounds really good. Um, I found that the low end kind of went away the more you turn it up. I had the thing probably about just a little under three quarters volume and I could have increased the volume on my modeler, which in this case I use a quad cortex um, in order to get more volume out of the speaker. But I found, yeah, the one thing that I noticed the more you turn it up and it makes sense because it's only a 10 inch speaker, you're losing a bit of that low end. So the FR12, which I actually have right behind me here, is a little bit of a bigger speaker obviously it's a 12 inch versus a 10 inch and i find that the cabinet being bigger than the 10 inch cabinet also gives it a bit more low end so it's important to note that these are also closed back cabinets which means you're usually going to get a little bit more low end than you would out of a open back cabinet but it's just something to keep in mind so kind of as the night went on, I mentioned that I was turning up the cabinet to kind of see how it was going to sound. And I also found that I was having to use the cut control a little bit more. So by the end of the gig, it was probably around half and the bass, middle and treble knobs were stuck right in the middle. Uh, that is what Fender says gives you kind of a flat response. If you subtract or add from the 12 o'clock noon position on those knobs, um, you're obviously controlling the bass, middle, and treble frequencies more than, um, than you would basically coming right out of your modeler. So one thing about this gig in particular, uh, there weren't that many people at it. So I wasn't able to have it on full blast and the PA that was projecting our sound from the front wasn't super loud. So you kind of get an idea of how that particular cabinet will sound 
But that being said, there weren't a bunch of meat shields in the room to kind of soak up the sound and see how the sound would kind of change. It was because of the kind of echoiness of the bar, the place that I was playing, it was probably a little bit more shrill and a little bit more high end than the sound that we would normally like um, when there's more people there and that kind of thing. Yeah, the cabinet really had no problem keeping up with the drummer. I found that the tilt back feature was awesome because I really didn't have like that stage that I was on wasn't very big. So I didn't have a lot of room to kind of place the amp way behind me and then hear kind of how it sounds that way. I basically had to have it almost directly at my feet. And so having those tilt back legs was a very cool and welcome feature, something that I wouldn't have had with my Friedman cabinet. But that being said, yeah, I used the, cu the cut control a little bit more and I tended to crank that cabinet a bit more. My in-ear mix that I was using was also not fantastic, so it was really nice to have the FR10 on stage and be able to literally reach back and turn up the knob like you would on an amplifier. So kind of wrapping up the video here, my overall feelings and thoughts about the cabinet, now that I have the FR12 that I've been using a little bit and thinking about the FR10, I think the FR10 is kind of the perfect sweet spot. Now I'm probably gonna release another video that talks specifically about whether the FR10 or the FR12 is right for you, but my initial feelings because of the kind of setup that I'm looking to go with, which is compact and light, the FR10 is the winner for me, and as I mentioned before, the, the cabinet is super light. I think it's 26 pounds, I think the FR12 is 28 pounds, but the physical cabinet on the FR12 is much larger than that on the FR10. So you have the FR10 being basically the same size as a Blues Junior versus the FR12, which is essentially the same size as a Hot Rod Deluxe. So anyway, I hope you got something out of that video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that like button for me. It really does help me out as a new YouTuber. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. I try my best to answer all the questions and read through all the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.